So what if I told you of a mother, a wife, a daughter, someone of high calibre, intelligent, sophisticated, righteous, I mean, there's not enough words to really describe her. She spent her life in dedication, striving for justice, working for peace and always speaking the truth without any hesitation. You see, she didn't fear the blame of the blamers, nor did she seek any form of recognition. For her, it was always about Allah, and only before Him would she bow down in prostration. She was a noble woman, a courageous woman, a pious woman, a role model for us all. So who is this woman that I speak of? Well, she's actually somebody we all know of. Her name is Afia Siddiqui, aka Prisoner 650, who in my eyes has become a modern day Asya, the wife of Pharaoh. But you see, Asya faced only one tyrant in the form of a husband, whereas Afia, she faced many, betrayed and sold by her own for a small amount of money, and then thrown into the brutal hands of her western enemies. And what can I tell you about what they did to her? I mean, I don't think I could ever truly describe her torture. They tied her, they shackled her, they beat her, they raped her. They raped her, violated her, over and over again, mercilessly they put her through so much pain. And believe me, I'm not exaggerating, this isn't a story that I've just created. You only need to take a look at her picture, just look at what they've done to her, what she was and what they made of her. I mean seriously, how could we have ever let this happen to her? And now our sister Afia languishes in the cold cells of America, 11 long years of complete torture, being labelled a terrorist, an extremist, they called her Lady Al-Qaeda, made up a fake story just to silence her. But the sad reality is she's not the only one. There are many just like her. Ma'azam Beg, Tariq Mahanna, Talha Ahsan, Baba Ahmed, and how can we forget Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman? But you see, they're not your ordinary prisoners. They didn't steal, rape, or commit any murders. They didn't harm anyone or do anything of that kind. They were guilty of being a Muslim, and that was the only crime. But let's face it and understand it, rather just ignoring it, that there is a battle taking place, a battle between truth and falsehood. And it's about time that we understood. Islam is what they hate and they would do anything to destroy it if they could. They wish to defame it, ruin it, deface it, by silencing anyone who calls for it. Today it's our sister Afia and the likes of her, but tomorrow it could either be you or even me. So for how long will we remain oblivious? Isn't it time that we stand and state the obvious, make awareness, raise our voices and do whatever we can to speak out against this injustice? Just remember, it may be a test for them, but it's a test for us too, to see what do we do for this ummah, to take them out of this pain that they suffer and be prepared to stand before Allah with an answer. So now is the important question, what can we exactly do? What is our duty and obligation that we need to follow through? Well, whether you think it's making dua, or sending some money, or writing a letter, know that you have not fulfilled the right of a fellow believer until you fulfill the hadith of our beloved messenger, when he said, Fukkul Aani, release the Muslim prisoner. And even though these deeds are good and rewarding, they're just temporary solutions and they will not end their suffering. The ultimate solution lies in the deen of Allah. By establishing His law, we will once again have our shield, the Khilafah. In the past, our leaders would send a whole army just to release one prisoner. No one would think of harming us. They wouldn't even dare to lay a finger. So with the strength of Islam, we will release our prisoners with dignity. We will return our pride, honor and sanctity. So let us work for the deen of Allah if we truly wish to help this ummah. Help to re-establish Islam as a law and order. Struggle and strive our utmost and pray that it returns sooner rather than later.